Howdy guys, how's it going today? Um, welcome back to 3G's Garage. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to take you through a little, uh, a little problem we're having with old Dolores here. Um, we went... A little history on Dolores. Um, picked it up, I think around two years ago strictly as a parts unit. Um, I, I think I might have paid 50 bucks for it, got it with a different sled, um, kind of packaged them up. Um, typically, the, the later style wedge-shaped uh, enticers are not necessarily the ones that we've built. Um, even though they're mostly the same as the original, we just like the older style ones. Um, Anyway, so I, I kind of mechanically rebuilt this sled, and it was a real turd when, when I started with it, like a real field rat. Um, we'll try to um, find a, a picture of it when we got it, maybe, and insert that into the video this here. But is Dolores. Uh, not sure what year it is. It's a 340 enticer, the wedge style. Um, it's probably going to be used for uh, parts because higher miles the track is locked up it's been sitting forever i mean somebody could revive it but you know um so yeah so rebuilt it last year and um only had a chance to run it once so like the intention was we were going to take it to uh, manawa for the snowdio which is the late cross event um and that got canceled last year because of the warm weather that we had so um, we did have it up on Moody Lake. I, I did some testing with it, and then we played around with it. Um, me and the boys uh, did some racing between the three of us. Um, so when I went to pull this, the, the sled operated fine uh, the times that we had it out, and it was mostly ready. Um, the only things that I really needed to tie up on it was the wiring. And uh, this model sled did not come with a tether. And when you go to race them, you have to have a tether switch. Um, that way, uh, if you fall off, it unplugs and shuts the motor off. So I ins installed the tether there, but I never finished wiring it. So like some of the stuff was kind of left kind of janky open um, for the, the times that we used it. But uh, so when we went to go pull it out of storage this, this year, uh, it would not rev. And... It wasn't running right. It won't rev up, and therefore it won't move. We couldn't drive it onto the trailer. We had to drag it. Um, and I think I know what it is. And if I'm right, uh, this will be a good little tutorial video for anybody who's had an older Yamaha sled. I would say 75% of you know what I'm going to be talking about. And if you don't, you watch the video and you're going to say, oh, that's what was wrong with my sled. Because this is a super common problem on these old ones. Uh, it's a, they, Yamaha came up with the system with the initials TORS, T-O-R-S. And it stands for Throttle Override System. Um, and basically what the system was designed to do was to prevent, uh, to kill spark in the engine in the event of a stuck throttle. So like if you're... You pinch the throttle wide open and it sticks to the bars. Um, as soon as you let off on that, it was supposed to cut the spark and make it so that the engine only idled. So that's what I think is happening here. So I think I'm gonna we're gonna cut here. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna get the sled fired up without my microphone on so that it doesn't deafen you guys and you can actually hear what's going on but we'll show you how it's running before we dive into trying to fix the problem here So 
that's what we're dealing with here. So as soon as you give give it throttle, it just bogs, does nothing. So we're gonna dive into this wiring. Um, I'm assuming that's what it is. In all honesty, this, this sled sat in the barn all summer. So, I mean, we've had mice, you know, we've had plugged exhausts, we've had stuff like that. So um, I'm assuming it's the tour system. So we'll, uh, we'll get into that a little further in depth and we'll show you guys what that's all about in a minute here. All right, guys, so we got old Dolores back in the shop here. Um, I grabbed some parts from the parts room just to use as some examples for um, what, what makes up the tour system. So I believe the tour system started probably going to be wrong on this, but I believe it started in 1984 um, with the new style enticer and the phaser and whatever else came out in 84. I think they all had it. And then I'm not sure how many years that ran for, but it ran through the nineties for sure. So um, if you have a sled from these eras and you, you can look at some of your components and figure out if you have it or not, um, if you haven't already had problems with it, which a lot of people do. So, um, so here it is. So like this uh, is a carburetor off of an 86 SR5. Notice the wiring coming out of it um, where the throttle, where you would adjust your idle, the throttle stop actually rests on a button. So when the throttle comes to a close, the button gets pushed, right? When the throttle opens up, button opens up with it. Right, so the other end of the the other end of the the tail here is uh, your throttle block because obviously you've got a cable running from the carburetor to the throttle, and so if you can kind of look inside of here, there's a button inside of there. This uh, hole is shaped like an oval for a reason. It's not just a pivot point; it actually slides a little bit. There's a button in there. You can see that moving. So when you when you put your thumb on the throttle, it actually slides over and pushes that button with the with the pressure from the cable. You can kind of see it right here. It's moving. It's not just turning about its axis there. It's actually sliding and pushing that button in. So this isn't the greatest example because the sled's kind of hacked apart for racing and stuff and um but well, hopefully you can get the gist of this so like on any of any of the tours sleds um you're gonna have uh off of your main wiring harness you're gonna have two connectors that run up near the carb and those would actually plug into your tours carb so you know if the, the correct carb was on this sled you'd have these and these are looped together and these are looped together for a reason so if you're having problems with your sled and your tour system you know if it's giving you the symptoms where it'll idle but it just won't take off at all it won't move it's cutting out hesitating real bad um, the easiest way to fix that is to un undo the connection from the carb to the wiring harness and take it and plug it into itself so the system needs to as long as the system is closed, the sled will run and operate just how it's supposed to. But what happens is, is like, so these are the circumstances in which the Taurus was invented for is, let's say you go wide open throttle, you're cruising along, everything's, you're having a blast, all of a sudden you let off the throttle, but for some reason your throttle gets stuck, right? Now you're, this end of your tours, this button is not being pushed and neither is this one. So that's kind of where, you know, it's supposed to save you. So any RPMs over idle, it will just cut the spark and drop you down to nothing. So it would stop you in your tracks if, you know, it, for all intents and purposes, it's a, it's a great idea. Um, but they do cause problems. And I believe most of the faults are in this uh, button up here on the thumb throttle. So that's the general idea of it. Now on our setup, um, I don't have a TORS carb. Usually not a problem. All you gotta do is loop your wiring back together and everything will operate perfectly. But of course, you know, 
I was trying to put a tether on here and we just hacked this wiring up and I never had a chance to finish it up. So um, the only weird thing is, is that I know that the sled ran and operated fine last year and I don't remember if I took something off of here or not. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to jump her a wire um, from the TORS. The TORS wire is the black one with the yellow stripe. And I'm going to loop that back down and tie that back into our system down here. And if I'm guessing correctly, it should fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll check back in with you guys in just a second. All right, guys. So just finished up uh, closing off the loop here on the TORS system. Um, so what I did was I, I took a, all I had was yellow wire, but uh, jumpered the two together and closed off the system there. And then ran it up here because I had it open up here and I closed off, made the connection up here. So by all rights, um, we haven't tested it yet, but by all rights, it should operate the way it's supposed to. Um, and then uh, we'll drag her outside and fire her up for you and, and see, if, see if that works. All right. All right, guys. So rolled old Dolores back outside. We're going to give her a pull and see if it, uh, see if our little... Tours Remedy actually did the trick on it, so cross your fingers. like that was it so good news for us um, bad news is old Dolores probably won't see any action this year because uh, we don't have a race to enter it in so it will probably sit for another year but that's okay at least we know where we're at with it and uh, you know she'll be ready to go when when she's needed so um, we're gonna take you guys back in the shop and we're gonna go through the list of uh, run down a quick list of things that that we've got to do to our sleds yet. Um, time is running short for us here. We have no snow to do any testing, but uh, we got to get some stuff buttoned up. So, you know, tag along here. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. All right, guys, we're back in the shop now. It's my turn to talk on the video. So we're just going to touch on all the crap we got to do in around a month, uh, which is pretty absurd. So we're going to start with the old reliables here. Uh, 78, 79 ET340s, both surprisingly pretty much ready to go. Um, the frame beam on that one is a little bent, but if I needed to race it, I could. This one is, I think, ready to go if we need to use it. It's got a chain case leak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that one, you know, could it could race. Um, who needs chain case fluid anyways? Big dogs here, um, the old man's trying to remedy some carb issues with his fabulous dual carb setup, mostly thumb throttle and uh, a new cable. So, and this one is also probably um, gonna have some more clutching work done to it. This one, we just made a video on that. We got the fan fixed. This one could probably race tomorrow if I needed it. Um, I do have a Comet 108 that'll probably go on there as well, though. And the third 540 race sled we have here is Griffin's. Um, you just put a new track on there. Um, but while doing that, he discovered that one of the mounting tabs for his skid is actually um, cracked, which is not good at all. So he's got to get that worked out. Um, while this thing's on the lift and in the shop, we're going to throw a new engine in it. This one was a complete rat parts unit, um, junkyard engine. It smells like mouse piss when it runs. The old man is going to cook up a fine engine for this thing. These are not painted silver. They're actually vapor blasted by yours truly. Um, this crank uh, was from a 90 XLV. I replaced the bearings on both ends because they were a little worn, but uh, overall 
should be a, a good engine when it comes together for that thing. So it'll finally get like a proper um, healthy beating heart once it's all put back together. Um, back here, these are um, kind of the back burner projects. This guy here, we raced once at Arpen. This is a 79 EX 440. We didn't just race it at Arpen. Griffin raced it. Was a 70s class champion he, on that sled. He kicked ass. Yes. Um, what does this thing need? Um, not much. The ski is a little tweaked, um, but it could probably, Griffin raced it like that the last two years, I think, and the throttle sticks when you turn it all the way to the right. Minor issue. It, minor issue. We'll glance over that. Um, one, uh, another one of Griffin's units here. I think what it, this is a 81 yep. ET300. This thing is ready to go. I think he just needs to bolt the seat back up because he uh, was doing something there. 85 SS 540. Uh, pretty much ready to go too. Uh, could use some new carbides and studs, but if it was needed to be raced, I think it could. Um, that has a fresh 540 engine in it. This guy here, this is the sled that we made that um, Revival Will It Run video on. Um, it's got a different hood on it now, but this needs a lot of work. It's got an Ovation engine swapped into it. And I think, old man, you know better than me. What does this thing need? Uh, I got to put together a Comet 102 clutch for it, for the primary. Um, it's really not that much. The seat needs to go back on it. Um, button up some of the wiring. Um, I had to swap over the entire uh, Ovation wiring harness into it. So, um, but this was the one that I, I put the, the ski the ski wideners on it. So she's got a nice wide stance. Um, I can't wait to get that thing out on the on the ice. It needs carbides too. So. When these enticers are set up for ice, like they are a ton of fun. So much a ton fun. of fun. Um, this guy, 77 EX 440. Um, the old man put a new base gasket in the engine here. And um, yeah, it should be ready to go. It's a little untested, but it'll, it'll make it out fine, I think. 80 EX 440, this one needs some skid work. Um, set up for ice, but runs good. Should be ready to go for the season. And then this guy, I robbed a fuel pump out of it for my SRX, so it needs a fuel pump. Other than that, I think it's ready to go. So well, how, much, how many sleds is that? Like too many? Yeah. So tons um, pretty much tons every, of work oh, to do. and we didn't even talk about oh, yeah. the biggest project in the room. This guy. It needs just about everything. This fella. Uh, it would take us 10 minutes to get through talking about what yeah. it all needs. So we're not going to talk about it. All you yep. have to do is look at it to see that it needs everything. And we're going to have some videos coming up on some of our, our things that we got to do here. It's got a, we're trying to figure out what gas tank to put on it because Every one that we have is, is bad so far, so we're going to have to custom make something for that. So we'll probably take you guys along on that journey or, you know, some of the other stuff that we do to it. So, so yeah, like I said, that leaves us with like a month and two days to get all this wrapped up. So, yeah, yeah got a lot of work to do. Yeah, lots of things going on here. No shortage of work for sure. All right, guys, so that's a rundown of all the projects we've got going on. I know some of you guys were asking if you're going to see race footage and stuff. Um, the answer is hopefully yes. Uh, I know some of the events, they kind of teeter on uh, not letting us have GoPros on our helmets um, while we race. Um, but in the past, they have. So, like, I'm hoping that holds true and we'll get you some, some like, first-person uh, race footage. Um, we're planning on our schedule so far, it looks like all of this is super tentative because... It's been super warm here. We have no snow. Um, so our plan is to go to the Midwest Ride-In and participate in the Retro Snowcross. That's on January 24th, I believe. Eighth. Eight, Eighth. 28th, uh, Saturday. And then um, first weekend in February would be ARPEN, the ARPEN X Snowcross event. And that one's more reliant on having snow, so hopefully they have that. Um, what do we got after that? I know we have potentially Neosho. Neosho is oh. the second week of February. That's a lake cross event, but that's not very far north. So that one's going to be 
again, that will be hit or miss on whether or not they have a good ice for that. Um, then we've got, we're looking at either Junker Sled or heading back to ERX. Um, we love both of those events, the Ditch Banger and the Junker Sled Weekend. Um, so we're kind of on the fence there. We're, we're going to see how this uh, retro snow cross goes first, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll go from there. And then, uh, and then we are probably planning on going to uh, Nutterville for the Beater Cross, and that's the first weekend of March. So um, that's what our schedule looks like. And then we got a big Moab uh, dirt bike riding trip planned for shortly after that. So, um, but for now, since all the work is done, that means we're ready to crack a beer. Today, we got the old G Heilman's old style. Only the good shit in 3G's garage. Oh, man, I love it. Oh, oh Keegan man. just loves it. And you know what? Another thing, since the work is done and we've got no snow out there, you know, and it's, uh, oh, before we go, it's almost the holidays. So to all of you guys out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks a lot for the likes and the comments. Keep those coming. Um, the channel's growing and we want to keep doing this stuff. So keep that stuff up on your end. We really appreciate it. I hope you guys all have a really good holiday with your families and and a happy new year and uh you know let's all say some uh say some prayers that we're going to see some snowflakes pretty soon but you know in the meantime like you know throttle junkies like us we got to find some way to at least run the engine so i think we're going to give you a, we got an old stacker unit sitting here so we're going to give you a little smoke show with this guy we got the old style got an enticer i mean life couldn't get much better than this right except for a little snow but this is all we got for now Thank <laughs> you.